Hey everybody, Greg here, and this is a short video to show you a feature in iMovie I just accidentally stumbled into, and I think it's going to be really valuable for the work I do, and maybe it's something that you would find helpful as well. So, one thing I've done quite a bit is I'll be talking in a video about something, and then I'll cut away to a picture of the thing I'm talking about, um, or I'll cut away to video. And those so even like a PowerPoint presentation, you know, I'll be talking and then cut away to the slide from the PowerPoint. Well, those cutaways are kind of abrupt. It just instantly goes from you see me talking to this, you know, image in the background or whatever that comes to the foreground. Um, and there was a feature in Final Cut Pro that I really liked where you could sort of fade into that image and then fade out of it or the video. And so uh, I missed that in iMovie. I was kind of wishing it was there. Well, uh, I don't know if it was recently added, if it wasn't there before, but it certainly is there now, and I stumbled into it. So basically, there are these little controls or handles in the top left and right of the video, these light blue dots that you'll see that will let you fade the video in, as the pop-up text there says, if, if a person holds their mouse long enough. So um, anyway, now you'll notice that depending on where your mouse is, there may be a different message. Like here, press the R key while dragging to select a range, etc. Uh, I, I know that the lower um, buttons, you know, are controlling the fading in of the audio, and I've done that before when I drop in a music soundtrack, I'll kind of fade it in and out. But I just, I'd never noticed those top control knobs before. So here, let me show you what this does. I'm just taking a video clip of me riding my bike, and I want that as a backdrop to what I'm what I'm saying here about riding the bike to Menards, you know. So let me play this for you. All right, so I made the bike ride over to Menards, got the, uh, the wood that I need for this seatbelt clip, and just to recap what I mentioned, you know. So that's the short segment I want to, I'm talking about making this bike ride over to Menards, and I wanted to show me on the bike going to Menards. Now that video clip, I was able to record by propping up my iPhone at a distance. It was actually at a railroad crossing, and so the gate for the railroad was uh, a perfect level and a perfect location for me to put my camera on that. Hopefully a train wouldn't come, and then it fall off. But uh, anyway, so I had that camera propped up, did the video. I actually did it in slow motion, so if I wanted to, I could show me riding the bike and then go kind of into slow motion and then normal motion again. But um, I decided for this, it ends up being just better to play it in normal speed. But anyway, let me show you now then what you can do with those controls up there. Fade video in. I can drag that in a little bit. You'll notice when I'm pulling it from the left, it's actually doing a fade in for the left and right, which is nice. Then the the fade in points are identical. That's helpful. I guess if I wanted separate fade in points, I could maybe grab the right one and independently move that, I don't know, or hold shift down. There's got to be some way to. That's one of the things about Apple is um, there are these features that you can just kind of stumble into. Okay, so it's holding down the option key while you drag that will let you control the fade in and fade out independently. So control, uh, option, yeah, option and drag. Um, I've noticed <clears throat> there's some key combinations that you just kind of guess at, but like if you hold down shift or control or command, um, there's some programs where you're resizing a box and it resizes proportionately. So if it's a picture, it stays, you know, the correct dimensions. Um, but there are other times where you may want to, you know, resize it and skew it a bit, change the dimensions. So you have to hold down a key to do that. Uh, there's also an option when you're moving things around. If you're snapping to what's called snapping to the grid, you'll notice you can't do small precision movements of objects. You can hold down a key to, to take away the grid momentarily and make slight changes to objects. So anyway, just mentioning that, that with Apple, there are these cool key combinations um, that may not be intuitive right off, but you can kind of play around and try to find things like that. Well, anyway, with this fade in now, you'll see there's, I think, just a slightly more professional look to it when the the video I'm cutting away to fades in rather than just appears suddenly. I'll play that back again. 
Well, I made the bike ride over to Menards, got the, uh, the wood that I need for this seat. So you saw how that faded in. Um, and at the end there, the belt clip. And just to recap, I had that just cut abruptly back to me. Um, now, as I'm looking at this, and I, I just discovered this minutes ago, and that's why I'm sharing this video about it. Um, All right, so I made. I'm my thinking that uh, got the uh, the wood that I need for this seatbelt clip, and just to re. It's a nice effect, but. Uh, I may not want to use it all the time, maybe not for shorter clips, probably depends on the content of the video, but uh, in this one I actually, I kind of like the fading in and then the, the quick jump back. Seatbelt clip, and just to recap what I mentioned. Yeah, um, so anyway, something you can play with, I found it helpful <laughs> to know about. Oh, the other thing, sorry, second point that I stumbled into. I was clicking around on this. One thing I found was sometimes you'll click, or at least this was happening to me, I would click on the video and it would not be selected. It wouldn't select it. Like right there. Okay, I'm clicking, click, 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 click. I've clicked 10 times. It's not selecting that video. Now, I don't know if that's because my mouse is pointing at the gray turtle there. Maybe if I point, yeah, that, that's probably it. So if you're clicking on the little gray turtle, it won't select it. There are things like that, though, that really confuse uh, new users and people that just uh, maybe aren't as familiar with the, the computer technology or software, um, they'll they'll click and say, hey, you know, I'm clicking on this video and it's not selecting, <clears throat> and they would just think their computer's broken or they'd wonder what's going on. Now, for me, I was confused about it too. I was like, well, maybe I need to like select another clip and then go back and select that clip. But there you go. I think if you're you're clicking on any of the controls or if you're clicking on that little turtle icon, or it would be a rabbit icon if you've adjusted the speed, either fast or slow. Um, anyway, uh, but the, the other point I wanted to make was I, was I was going in here, I was clicking on this to try to position it and, and define where the start points and end points were. You know, I <clears throat> can grab the end point here and define that to say, oh, okay, I'm going to move it a little right, move it a little left, and... I want that video cutaway to basically end right when that trailer disappears. Um, and I want it to begin sort of, you know, here where I'm on the bike just getting to the railroad tracks. So that's just click and drag those left and right sides to control that. And then I showed you how to do the fade in, fade out. Well, here's the other thing is while I was clicking on that, I thought, well, maybe I'm going to crop that a little bit because I'd like to... Uh, not show the full frame that I've recorded. Let me go back and just show you what, what that's looking like. So if I say fit, you'll notice there's a lot of extra road here in the foreground. Um, and I, I thought, well, it'd be nice to have sort of a zoom in of me riding the bike so you can really kind of see that a little better. So I went into this cropping and there's fit, which essentially, you know, would make it fit the full frame. Or you can kind of crop like this. I could crop that section there and just show you know the the railroad track area well then I saw the Ken Burns effect well I, I've used Ken Burns effect for a long time um, basically you know with with still images you have a still image and you want some motion so you take this picture and then you say oh Ken Burns effect I'm gonna start up here and then I'm going to slowly pan the camera down or from left to right or right to left or whatever you want to do you can have a start frame and an end frame and then the computer automatically does the animation for you well here's the Ken Burns effect for video now the reason why I find that really interesting and helpful is because you know there, there are times when your camera is propped up on a railroad crossing right like this or on a tripod or whatever and you want to create uh, the effect that there's you know it's, it's panning essentially that you don't have a still camera but it's almost as if you had a camera person saying oh, okay now I'm video recording Greg crossing the railroad track um, it can add a little more you know polish or you know just effect to your video so here I can pick that start point and the end point uh, for this cutaway, and presumably, and you know, you can do this with anything, not just a cutaway video. You could do it with your other videos as well. Um, but I'm going to start have that start point be here, and then the end point be there, 
and you'll see how this works. So now when I, I go ahead and um, press enter, return, play that back, you can see it's a little bit zoomed in. It's got the, uh, the wood that I need for this seatbelt clip. And just to recap what I... Now it was slow, you didn't notice it, it wasn't very abrupt, but you can see the camera is essentially panning. I'm coming into the frame, it's following me a little bit, and moving across the frame. So anyway, those were the two discoveries. Ken Burns' effect with video, um, and also this ability to fade in and fade out, which I think will be nice in some situations. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any ideas, suggestions, comments, whatever, I'm always happy to hear, uh, hear from people about that. And thanks for watching and have a great day.